Hello everyone and welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon. We're continuing our jaunt through the armory for the Eastern Bloc Coalition and today we're finally into the air tab. We're taking a look at air superiority fighters and the two that are of particular note are the Polish MiG and the East German MiG. Now these are both technically MiG 913S's and that can be a little bit confusing especially if you're on the newer end of things just seeing the same aim out there but they are different units that behave very very differently and not knowing those differences can really kind of throw you through a loop. So we have Balanced, an expert player with us here today to sort of talk about which one of these is more valuable and which one should be in your deck. Yeah, okay, so um, I'll like to preface that both of these ASFs fulfill obviously the exact same role, but that they also have been a pretty big point of contention recently, at least from my discussion with some people about Eastern Bloc. People like to like flip around, decide which one to pick, et cetera, et cetera. My overall thoughts are that they're both do the job fine, but I would put my general recommendation towards the Polish MiG simply because of how much more cost effective it is. So you're paying 135 points for a unit that gets at a higher veterancy, and veterancy is one of the most important things we're talking when talking about air engagements. Yes, it is semi-active, which can matter versus the fire and forget that the other MiG has. However, I believe that the veterancy advantage combined with the slight range advantage on the Pol MiG. Uh, makes it an overall better choice as an ASF than the East German MiG. So because you're let's paying handle those, uh, let's handle those actually one at a time. First, the veterancy. The East German MiG is two at hardened. The Polish MiG can take two at veteran, three at rookie. Uh, just assume I know nothing about the game and tell me what I'm doing here and why it matters. So you always want to upvet your ASFs because air engagements are all dice roll dependent. They're like probably like one of the most RNG, like probably the most RNG dependent stuff in the game. So you always want to have the best chance possible to win. So you want to always upvet your ASFs, right? So something coming at veteran or elite for like a decent availability, like two or one, two, like two or three, is like phenomenal. That's so good. That's like excellent. That's really good. So that's uh, why so the, the Polish MiG's two at veteran is important. Yeah, that's why the Polish MiG has been basically like the the consistent pick for years now. Um, now there is a slight advantage that the East German MiG gets that Fire and Forget has, as the missiles will come out quicker, right? They will come out slightly quicker, qu slightly, slightly quicker. Qu slightly quicker sorry there we go, there we go. <laughs> yeah. and that can be that can be noticeable Semi right actives i believe you can't have more than one in the air at a time right so the yes. fire and forgets can you can shoot two and the semi-actives you have to wait until you either hit or miss before you can fire the second time which yeah you do fire earlier on the 8400 meter range but if you have to wait until contacts you get the first one off quicker second one off slower kind of thing, right yeah, uh, the, here's the important thing though. There is a slight little range bump that the uh, that the Polish MiG gets, which is nice, and the suppression bump helps as well. So I think that's a decent offset to um, fire and forget in this case, especially combined with the fact that it has higher veterancy than the um, than the MiG, right? Uh, I guess I have a question for you, and it's it applies to these two, but also to air superiority fighters in general, particularly the ones that only have two of their longer range missiles, like both mm -hmm. of these do. And this is a question actually from a discussion I had with Brara, um, where he pointed out if you have 60% accuracy and you have decent veterancy, so maybe that's it's higher, it's something like, uh, let's just ballpark 80%, and you're shooting at a MiG, or you're shooting at some other plane that has about 40% ECM, you're not really going to be able to rely on landing both of those shots at the same time, and mm -hmm. you don't have the HE power to kill. So can one of these take down an enemy air superiority? air superiority fighter assuming the other player doesn't really mess up and play into it or do you need to buy both of them to guarantee a kill one of them can one of them absolutely can take down an air superiority fighter and that 100%. sorry that without your opponent just sort of throwing it into your face yeah yeah you can you you i can have seen two like long range missiles directly hit back to back multiple times like i could probably count hundreds of times that it's happened now obviously double asfs is always going to be more reliable than one right you need to understand that air engagements are all rng based right so what you're really trying to get is reliability and consistency in your favor i'm not going to tell you that like two long range missiles hitting back to back is like wholly like always consistent but it'll happen a decent amount of the time like don't gotcha. count it out gotcha gotcha all right well that is very very important and i think that does a pretty good job of covering the differences between these um so sort of as we heard earlier there's no wrong answer but people tend to side toward the polish mig and just from my own experience playing the game and, and really getting into it in the last year or so, um, cheaper options can can help out a lot. You don't realize how much you need those 15 points until everything is on fire and everything is going wrong and you just need to buy that one unit 
and get it going a little bit quicker. So if you do sort of view these as equivalent, take the cheaper one, get it to be a little bit more space in your in your purse as you play the game, um, or well, I suppose if you're a big manly macho fellow like myself, clearly. Uh, <laughs> so that's our unit comparison for today. Thank you all for hanging around, and we'll have another one for you tomorrow.